Battlefield Podcast. Hey everybody, Ola aka Chalk1 from Battlefield Podcast here. In this video, I want to talk to you a little bit about Open Broadcaster Software, or OBS for short. Uh, this is the software that uh, both Tim and I use for when we're streaming. And uh, there's been a lot of questions um, and interest in it lately, so I figured I'd throw together a little video with how I have things set up. Um, that might be faster than answering people's questions on Twitter and stuff like that. Uh, lots of people have been using Xplit before, which is great and fairly intuitive as far as the user interface. OBS however, is free, and XSplit is not cheap. OBS is very powerful. Um, it doesn't bog down your system nearly as much as XSplit does, and I really highly recommend it. But it's not quite as easy to configure. It's not as intuitive, so I want to walk you through it. First of all, after you've installed it, all of this stuff down here you won't have because it will just be blank. Get to that in a moment. First thing you want to do is go to your settings. Um, I'll walk you through these. Basically, there's several profiles. I have several profiles set up, but you can create different ones if you want. It's not really important. Um, encoding here. This is where you're going to set your quality balance. The quality balance, the higher this number, the more CPU you will use. I use a streaming PC, so this PC, really all it does is stream, so I can set it all the way up to the max. Uh, the bitrate depends a little bit more on your bandwidth. I think I have about 2.5 megabits up, so I put 2,000 in here. Um, you want to go a little bit less than what you can do, but not to the point where it's so much that other people can't consume it. So you might have to play around with this a bit, run a speed test, see what works. Um, audio coding, you can, codec, you can kind of leave that as uh, pretty standard fare here. Broadcast settings is where you're actually going to specify where you're streaming to. Uh, this program can also record to a file, which can be useful, but in this case we're live streaming. We are streaming to Twitch, there are several options here. Um, this is where you would enter your stream key. If you don't know how to get to your stream key, basically all you're going to do is um, Google Twitch stream key. I can put the link in the uh, description if you want, but if you Google that, you come up with a page like this where you, once you're logged in, there'll be a button for you to click and it will give you your stream key. It's basically a really long password that uh, lets you stream to your Twitch account. The server, you should just pick whatever is closest to you in location, pretty much. Um, these are all just defaults, I don't mess with any of those. Moving on to the video part, obviously your video adapter is going to be your video card. The resolution. Now, I only ever stream at 720p, some people stream at 1080p, some people stream at lower if they don't have the bandwidth or the CPU to do it. Um, basically I'll set this to 720p, so 1280 by 720 and we leave this here at none, so what this will do is it will capture, even though I'm playing at 1080p, the actual streaming area is only going to be 720p, we'll get to that in a sec. I stream at 60fps, but a lot of times, especially if you're streaming on the same PC that you're gaming on, 30 is what you want. For the audio, uh, by default OBS will broadcast any sound that the computer hears. This is the desktop audio device, you can choose from any audio device you have available. The microphone device is just that. If you want to be able to talk to people, you know, you want to set this to your headset or your microphone, whatever you use. You can use push to talk. I'd usually just leave it open. You can mess with uh, boosting different volumes and stuff like that. But for the most part, you'll be able to control that on the actual streaming screen in a second. Under advanced, I don't think I mess with these. This is the only one that you may want to play with. Um, this seems slightly... Hmm. Let's see, the, the slower you set this, the better the video quality will be, but it will start eating up a lot of CPU. I think the default is very fast. You can just leave that at that. If you haven't problems with that, you can change it to super fast, but your quality is probably gonna drop quite significantly, so I wouldn't mess with that if you don't have to. You can get into all sorts of defaults and really advanced settings here, but again, I'm not in that. I don't need that, I don't ever worry about that. Microphone noise gate, you can set up stuff as well. Noise gating means that it basically mutes the signal below a certain volume. So if you have a fan on in the background that you never want to come on, this will help. Okay, so now let's talk about the scenes and the sources. As you can see, I have a bunch of stuff in here already. When you start, it will just be blank. Think of scenes as cameras, okay? Each scene can have different sources in them, they're different setups. So for example, you can tell by the names here, I use different scenes for when we do the podcast. I use one for me, one for Tim, one for, in the last case, it was Corey, who was our guest. I got one for intro prep, all sorts of things. All you do when you add a scene is you give it a name, and 
it now gives you a list of sources to choose from. Sources are things such as webcams, uh, the game capture of the game itself. It can be uh, images, you know, when we use overlay images. So, for example, for lower thirds, uh, you just browse to the file. Here's the one that we used for Corey. And if I preview this stream, you can now see the image there. Other sources are games themselves, obviously. This is where you would choose the uh, game from the list of running programs here. I don't have a game running because I don't stream on... I don't play on this computer that I'm streaming on. In my case, I would actually add a video capture device and I choose my Aver Media card. See, this is also where webcams show up. You can play with settings and all that, but I usually just use it straight in and I have this configured as a global source already, so I'll just choose it from here. Here's my video image that's being fed into the capture card. Um, you can kind of tell that it's cut off. That's because the capture card's pulling in 1080p. But as I said before, I'm streaming at 720p. So this area isn't the whole thing. Uh, so basically what you can do is you can just right click on this and say fit to screen and it will then resize it. You can also, if you edit scene, you can, you know, resize these in various different fashions and move them around as you like. But, uh, Obviously, if we want this image above this, we can just right-click on it and we can say move up or move to top. And now we have uh, an overlay image in front of this footage here. Now just think of this as where the game would be, if this was a game source. So that's the simplest way. Um, show you how you can add webcams. These global sources, by the way, whenever you add a global source, it is just um, so that it's easier so you don't have to configure it for each scene that you want to do. So I think I have my webcam in here as a global source so that I don't have to, you know, if I want to use it on multiple scenes. Ah, I, I didn't want it to be that large. So see, here's a good example of how you can make it much smaller really quickly. And you can put it down in the corner. So that's how this basically works. Um, you can use multiple scenes. Like I said, you can see I have some set up here with quite a bit more advanced stuff for... Um, some of the streams here is the webcam for podcast there's some other stuff there and here's the one that we were working on basically when you say stop preview and as soon as you then hit start streaming it will actually broadcast to whatever live stream provider like twitch or something that you set up in the settings before these two uh areas here control the volume you can tell that this here basically shows you all the volumes on the computer itself, like if I were to go and start playing some music, um, you'd start hearing it in the stream, you know, I do that usually, uh, but you can control the volume for that separately from your microphone, which is this area here. I can also mute my microphone, sometimes you may want to mute yourself, uh, but keep the game sounds going, or vice versa, um, which, is, which is really kind of useful actually, so if I'm playing music, for example, Ooh, that's loud. Way too loud. So. That's how you can play around with the volumes, for example, which is kind of cool. So, let me take my camera off here. This is uh, OBS in a nutshell. It's not that difficult to get up and going. The biggest uh, challenge is usually the settings, making sure that you have things styled in properly so that your computer can handle it. Um, you're always going to have some performance loss when you're streaming on the same computer that you're gaming on. Especially if you're gaming... Uh, games like Battlefield 3 or anything that's resource intensive. There is no way around that unless you use a second computer to stream on like I do. But obviously then you have to have a second computer and a capture card and all that fun stuff. But, you know, I encourage everybody to give it a try. And if you have any questions, leave them in the comments and I'll do my best to answer them. And uh, any suggestions, let's have a little discussion about it. Let's do it. OBS is great. It's free. I have a link in the description. You should check it out. And thanks for watching the video. Hope it helped.